go ahead and six o'clock um, as people join us, I'm going to introduce myself and you and uh, mm -hmm. get started slowly here. Um, if you don't know, I am Shannon Haddock and I work in the fiction department at the Hoover Library. Um, I am most often giving people great reading recommendations. So, you know, if you want anything, any reading recommendations, I'm really good at fiction recommendations. And um, with us today is Dr. Xu Jing Rao, who is a wonderful find for me. And I'm counting on her becoming a good friend of mine. Um, through uh, the grapevine, I heard of, of Dr. Rao and, uh, and have gotten to know her over the couple of weeks we planned this. Um, she studied English language and literature for both her master's bachelor degree and master's degree at East China Normal University in located in Shanghai and she was a professor there starting when when did you graduate do you want to give away that age maybe not um, yeah uh, so starting from 2001 oh okay mm -hmm. and then in 2007 you obtained your PhD in global studies Mm -hmm. and has published several academic books and articles. And for the first last few years, she's been in Birmingham promoting the, chi the Chinese language teaching and mm -hmm. the cultural exchange here in Birmingham. And she's taught all ages. And right now she's got two kids that are very, very uh, often in the Hoover Library. So um, thank you so much. Shujing for joining me. And um, I'm hoping that we can get people excited about the Chinese New Year, which is coming up. I will say one thing. We've given out about a hundred of our little um, kits to make Chinese lanterns yourself. And I am putting together more. So if you did not come by the library, you can pick up at the fiction desk a, uh, a little couple of few paper pages and the instructions for making Chinese lanterns. I'm going to try and make as many as possible that can last uh, to whoever wants them up until about the 12th of February. So um, if you want to get started, I will gladly sit back and listen and learn. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Shannon. Uh, thank you for your wonderful introduction. Uh, it is my great pleasure to be here, and uh, I want to extend my thanks to you and also to the Hoover Public Library, uh, which is uh, one of the most favorite places of my two kids during uh, after school. Uh, so I'm very happy to join uh, join you here uh, to uh, talk uh, briefly about the Chinese uh, New Year. Uh, I still remember last year Hoover Library hosted. Um, Chinese New Year celebration, right? And I was there too, and many people attended that event. So this year, because of the pandemic, we have to do it virtually, but hopefully, hopefully, let's have good hopes for the future that we can do it again next year at um, on site at the library again. I would yes. be very happy to join you again uh, by that time. Uh, so, um, so today uh, I'm going to, um, we're going to spend about, um, uh, maybe a uh, one hour to one hour and a half and talk about the uh, uh, oh, okay I'm sorry well, yeah. that was my I was yeah. I'm sorry I was trying mm -hmm. to mute all the participants please forgive okay. me um, okay, that's going okay. forward, mm -hmm. I'd like just the speaker to have uh, access mm -hmm. to the microphone mm -hmm. that's great. okay no problem so um so uh, I will talk about the origin of the Chinese New Year um, and also um, the um, who celebrates the Chinese New Year uh, and also um, uh, the zodiac uh, signs, which is very closely, uh, closely associated with the Chinese New Year. And it is also a unique uh, part of the culture uh, to, uh, to, uh, to the Chinese uh, celebration of the new year too. And I will also talk about the um, festive activities as well as the food 
that we eat during the spring festival. Okay, so I will share my PowerPoint with you. And if you have any questions, uh, you are welcome to uh, post them uh, in the chat uh, room and then Shannon would um, pay close attention to them. And then uh, she will um, uh, bring up the questions during or after uh, uh, my, um, my talk. Okay, so you are, feel free to, uh, to, uh, uh, to pose your questions. Um, I will share my um, PowerPoint with you. Uh, so you, as you will uh, notice that uh, uh, the main uh, featured color of my PowerPoint today is what color? <laughs> red. Yeah, it's red, yeah. So uh, we'll talk about why uh, we always see red during this time. So now the first part is, um, the first topic is um, uh, the Chinese New Year is also called Spring Festival or Lunar New Year. Um, so it doesn't fall on the 1st of January, rather it falls fall on different dates of the Western calendar every year. Then why is it called Spring Festival? Uh, so in Chinese culture and East Asian countries, the festival is commonly referred to as the Spring Festival or Chunjie, uh, Chunjie because it, is, uh, it marks the beginning of the spring season in the lunar calendar, uh, which is uh, Li Chun. Uh, Li Chun is one of the 24 solar, um, um, solar, um, uh, uh, solar terms. Uh, uh, so it marks the beginning of spring. So it's also named the spring festival. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's the first of the 24 solar terms. Um, then how long is the spring festival? Uh, uh, you, you may be very surprised that most people in China have at least seven days off work. Uh, including three days legal holiday and the preceding and the following weekends. So I once talked to my uh, to an American friend and she really envied uh, the Chinese uh, people being able to have seven days off holiday, you know, uh, because like in the United States, mostly you have a three day long weekends, right? Right. Even, yeah, but then, so we, uh, we try to put the seven days together. Sometimes they need to move uh, move the dates to, to get the seven days together. So sometimes people would work at weekends and then they take the holiday off on Monday, Tuesday and get a whole week off. Um, now here is the uh, calendar for the uh, most recent years. Like uh, these are the official days uh, that people, uh, holidays that people take to celebrate the spring festival. Um, so like uh, in this year, people will start to um, um, to get uh, to have the holiday beginning from Friday uh, on February the 11th and last until the 17th. And they may even, they may also take longer holidays by putting the annual, you know, um, holidays together. Mm. Then why is it called the Lunar New Year? So I explained why it's called the Spring Festival. And then it's also called Lunar New Year, Nongli Xinyan. So it's the festival that also the festival that celebrates the beginning of a new year on the traditional lunar calendar. Uh, um, according to the ancient legend in China, the lunar calendar has very long history. Uh, maybe a two, uh, it, it goes to the very beginning of the Yellow Emperor or Xia Dynasty, uh, which is one of the earliest dynasties uh, of the. Chinese um, feudalism. Um, and the languages and regions outside of China are generally called the Chinese uh, calendar. Uh, and this calendar is based on the changes in the moon. And it, it, it's only sometimes changed to fit the seasons of the year based on how the earth moves around the sun. Um, so how is it changed? So like sometimes uh, every few years, once every few years, we may have 13 months a year in the lunar calendar. For example, mm -hmm. we, yeah, we may have two Mays uh, in one year uh, because like the, uh, that's kind of because the gap between the lunar calendar and the uh, Western calendar is too, you know, it's too big. So we have the, uh, we adapt, we add one extra month to it in the lunar calendar to, uh, oh. to fit, yeah, to fit. Um, uh, and uh, in mainland China, Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan, as well as uh, some other 
uh, East Asian countries. Uh, it, it is widely used in birthday markings. Like for me, uh, maybe before the age of 12, I only know, uh, know on which day I was born in, my, in the lunar calendar year. I didn't know on which day I was born in the you know, standard calendar. <laughs> so ah. it was after I grew up and I was able to use the um, internet, so I checked, uh, you know, in, in, in the year in which I was born. So which day uh, is the equivalent uh, in the standard calendar? So many, many Chinese people, uh, especially the older people, they, they only remember the lunar calendar, uh, their, their birthday according to the lunar calendar. And also many uh, festivals, folk activities uh, use uh, the lunar calendar too, uh, like the Dragon Boat Festival, uh, which mm -hmm. usually occurs in June and the uh, uh, mid-autumn festival usually occurring in uh, September or October uh, and many other uh, festi uh, yeah, festival activities. So what day exactly is a Chinese New Year? Just remember three points. Uh, first one is uh, the uh, Chinese New Year is never on January the 1st, the 1st, never, because it can never be that early. Uh, and it, of course, the dates uh, varies according to the Chinese lunar calendar. It's the first day of the lunar calendar in the new year. And it usually moves around the, between January, uh, January 21st and February 20th. So it can never be earlier than January uh, 21st, can never be later than February the 20th. Uh, so if someone tells me, tells you that uh, in a certain year, the Chinese, Luna, uh, Chinese New Year was on January the 10th, never believe him, uh, it's impossible. It, yeah. Many between these dates. So like this year, do you know this year, which day will be the Chinese New Year? So it will yes, be Friday. Really yes. Yeah, it will be Friday, the 12th of January. So is it late? Is it pretty late? Does it come late this year? A right. little bit late. Yeah, it's, it's now, pretty late. Yeah. Did, because, don't they say so, that something about the second mm. new moon or, oh gosh. Mm. I remember reading something about new moons, but I'm not sure how it works. Yeah, yeah. so uh, the uh, Chinese New Year, uh, comes on the first, uh, the first day of Chinese New Year begins on the new moon that appears uh, between these two dates. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, and then uh, 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 the last day of the Chinese New Year will be the uh, be 15 days later, and that was the time when we when we had the full moon. Uh, so that it's also called the Lantern Festival. Mm. Gotcha. Uh, yes. Okay. So, uh, so when we talk about Chinese New Year, uh, the twelve zodiac animals always come to our mind. Uh, in China, every each year is represented by one of the twelve zodiac animals. So the animal sign is believed to dominate the year and influence the character and destiny of people born in this year. So every Chinese knows his or her own animal sign. Okay, so I, uh, I don't know if the participants here, do you know uh, your animal uh, sign, the animal sign of your birth? Do you know in which year you were born in? Well, you know, we talked about mine and uh -huh. mine is interesting uh -huh. because my birthday is January 1st. Mm. So if you think about, and, and they give years associated with each animal. So mm. I looked up what animal was 1965 Mm -hmm. Yet that's not my animal because mm -hmm. I'm early in Janu January, so I am a dragon, by, according to you. And yeah. <laughs> I that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So if you are born, you if you were born in January or uh, the beginning of February, you need to be more careful uh, about deciding which animal, you know, which zodiac animal you were born in. Right. Yeah, you need to check and make sure uh, you are uh, you to uh, check to know whether you were the tail at the tail of the previous year or at the beginning of the first year uh, of the next year. So that's a little bit tricky. But other than that, uh, it's um, uh, it's very pretty easy. I will tell you how to 
how to calculate, how to do the calculation. So the 12 zodiac signs, uh, uh, you know, these are the 12 zodiac animals. So do you know which animal comes first? No. <laughs> Anyone who knows which animal comes the first? Well, isn't it the ox? Not, not the ox. Oh, man. Mm. Rat. The rat, yes, the rat. The rat. Yeah, so you, you would be very surprised. How would rat, first thing, why would a rat appear, you know, to be among one of the 12 zodiac animals, right? You know, it's very small. It's not very attractive type of animal. But it's fast. Yeah, it's fast. <laughs> The account of the um, the uh, river and the crossing of the animals, you'll get mm -hmm. to that, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. So when we talk about the order, then I will ask Sh Shannon uh, to show us the video about why these 12 animals are among the uh, zodiac animals and also reasons to some of the order. Okay, so the second is the ox. So last mm. year was the year of the red, and this year is the year of the ox. And then tiger, right? Uh, bunny, uh, dragon, okay? And then snake. Uh, the next one is horse. Uh, the next one is uh, sheep. Then later comes the monkey and the rooster, the dog and the pig. So the pig is the last one, the last one on the line. Uh, so you may wonder why isn't the cat on you know, on the list, right? The rat right. is here, but the cat is not here. Uh, so um, Shannon, could you please show us the video? Of the many myths explaining these animal signs and their arrangement, the most enduring one is that of the great race. As the story goes, Yu Di, or Jade Emperor, ruler of the heavens, wanted to devise a way to measure time. So he organized a race. The first 12 animals to make it across the river would earn a spot on the zodiac calendar in the order they arrived. The rat rose with the sun to get an early start, but on the way into the river, he met the horse, the tiger, and the ox. Because the rat was small and couldn't swim very well, he asked the bigger animals for help. While the tiger and horse refused, the kind-hearted ox agreed to carry the rat across. Yet, just as they were about to reach the other side, the rat jumped off the ox's head and secured first place. The ox came in second, with the powerful tiger right behind him. The rabbit, too small to battle the current, nimbly hopped across stones and logs to come in fourth. Next came the dragon, who could have flown directly across, but stopped to help some creatures she had encountered on the way. After her came the horse, galloping across the river. But just as she got across, the snake slithered by. The startled horse reared back, letting the snake sneak into sixth place. The Jade Emperor looked out at the river and spotted the sheep, the monkey, and the rooster, all atop a raft, working together to push it through the weeds. When they made it across, the trio agreed to give eighth place to the sheep, who had been the most comforting and harmonious of them, followed by the monkey and the rooster. Next came the dog, scrambling onto the shore. He was a great swimmer, but frolicked in the water for so long that he only managed to come in 11th. The final spot was claimed by the pig, who had gotten hungry and stopped to eat and nap before finally waddling across the finish line. And so, each year is associated with one of the animals in this order, with the cycle starting over every 60 years. Why 60 and not 12? Well, the traditional Chinese calendar is made up of two overlapping systems. The animals of the zodiac are associated with what's called the 12 earthly branches, or 十二地支, Another system, the Ten Heavenly Stems, or Shi Tian Gan, is linked with the five classical elements of metal, jin, wood, mu, water, shui, fire, huo, and earth, tu. Each element is assigned yin, or yang, creating a 10-year cycle. When the 12 animals of the earthly branches are matched with the five elements, plus the yin, or the yang, of the heavenly stems, it creates 60 years of different combinations, known as a sexagenary cycle, or ganzhi. So someone born in 1980 would have the sign of yang metal monkey, while someone born in 2007 would be yin fire pig. In fact, you can also have an inner animal based on your birth month, a true animal based on your birth date, and a secret animal based on your birth hour. 
It was the great race that supposedly determined which animals were enshrined in the Chinese zodiac. But as the system spread through Asia, other cultures made changes to reflect their communities. So if you consult the Vietnamese zodiac, you may discover that you're a cat, not a rabbit. And if you're in Thailand, a mythical snake called a naga replaces the dragon. So whether or not you place stock in what the zodiac says about you as an individual, it certainly reveals much about the culture it comes from. Okay, so this is how the, uh, and also uh, uh, behind this legend, there was a saying that, um, uh, why did the, um, uh, why was the uh, cat not on the calendar, uh, on, among the, on the list? And the legend has it that um, the cat asked the rat to wake him up before the night, <laughs> the night before the race. But then uh, the, uh, the uh, rat didn't do that. So um, when uh, the uh, cat was not able to get up in time to participate in the race. And so that's why nowadays, whenever the cat sees the rat, it's always chasing after it and wants to eat it. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so I want- I can, uh, I, can, I can imagine that a cat would sleep through the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, okay, so, um, so, um, and, Okay, um, so you see the 12, um, 12 animals, they form into a cycle, uh, cycle. so um, um, every 12 years, uh, the, um, the uh, zodiac sun comes back. Um, and people joke that 2020 is really the year of the rat, because first we are all in hiding. We only go out to get food. We store food to eat later. When people come close to us, we run away. <laughs> Do you agree? <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. Really, yeah, because of the pandemic. So, mm -hmm. um, so if you want to know about your zodiac sign, it's very, uh, if you don't know about your zodiac sign yet, it's very uh, easy for you to check them out. Mm. So if you come across a person who is of the same zodiac sign, as you are, that person could either be of your same age or 12 years older or 24 years older or 36 years older. So all timed by 12 because 12 years is a cycle. Mm. Um, interesting. And yeah, people yeah, also- Very interesting, yeah. Yeah, very interesting. So if you want to know about a person's age, um, uh, and you know, it's not polite, not very polite to, ask about person's age. And Chinese people, when they meet, they would often ask, what zodiac animal uh, are you? And when he knows the, um, gets the answer, he can know how old you are. <laughs> that, so this, that's more this, polite though? <laughs> yeah, yes, more polite. Mm. Gotcha. Yeah, and also people believe that um, birth in a certain year uh, of the zodiac, um, uh, the animal signs decide what your character will be like and can influence your decisions. Now, for example, a person born in the year of the monkey is generally believed to be smart, curious, and uh, mischievous. Okay, and if you are born, you were born in the year of the sheep, you are likely to be gentle, polite, and compassionate. Uh, both my daughter and my sons, uh, my son, they are both sheep. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I have two sheep or ram in my in my house, um, and dragon is also one of the uh, you know uh, this uh, dragon in the Chinese culture uh, stands for bravery and ambition. So it's a good uh, it's a very good animal. Unlike uh, in the Western culture, uh, I think in the Western culture, dragon is not is regarded as not a very good animal, right, Shannon? I'm not sure. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not even sure mm -hmm. it plays a role in in, in uh, Western mm -hmm. culture as much as yours. Okay. So um, I will mm -hmm. take since I am a dragon, I will take the bravery and, and ambition. <laughs> yes, you like are a that. dragon. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Just take it that's, from the Chinese way. Um, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> All yeah. right. Like I'm a snake. I'm a snake. So uh, snakes are also, you know, probably giving some negative traits uh, in many parts of the world. But um, in, in the 12 zodiac signs, it represents intelligence and the mis mystery. 
Uh, and rats are quick learners. Oxen are reliable and diligent. Tigers are natural born leaders. And rabbits tend to be quiet and alert. Dogs are loyal friends and horses and pigs are great to be around. So people prefer to be around uh, dogs, horses and pigs. They can be friends with everyone. Um, so roosters are considered to be energetic, punctual, observant, determined and hardworking. Uh, so- Shu hey, Jing, uh -huh. um, Virginia, did you have a question? Mm -hmm. Go yeah. ahead. A okay. comment because um, uh, mm -hmm. dragons do pay um, uh, are important in Western culture, but mm -hmm. usually in Western culture they're usually mm -hmm. hoarding gold and mm -hmm. maybe maidens. And usually, you know, we send off knights to go and slay them. Where mm -hmm. in, uh, the dragons are more, um, mm -hmm. well, they're more celestial and mm -hmm. related back to the emperor. Mm -hmm. And if you see a five-toed dragon, it's an emperor dragon and gotcha. uh, don't mm -hmm. have quite as much power as, it, as you might see with a five-toed dragon. And then you probably can um, uh, maybe elaborate some on this, but you usually will see a ball uh, that's with the um, Chinese uh, or Asian dragon. And I think mm -hmm. that ball is Mm -hmm. That's also supposed to be, I think, a celestial ball or a ball that kind of encompasses the universe. Um, I'm, uh, you can correct me if I, I'm wrong on that, but, you know, there's a more a medial, uh, well, more um, amiable feeling towards the Chinese dragon, where ours mm -hmm. is, in the West is one that we uh, must slay. And so you I see get you. quite a bit, especially <laughs> in medieval uh, literature, you'll, you'll yeah. see that a lot. And with a lot of the game playing and role playing, mm -hmm. like like um, Dungeons and Dragons, for example, uh, you have you to slay the dragon. Yeah, it's for sure. Yeah, yeah. I remember mm -hmm. learning about dragons when I was uh, studying uh, British literature, the medieval literature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but the uh, dragon is a good animal uh, in the Chinese culture. Um, Let's keep it that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And the Chinese uh, people would even sometimes call them as the descendants of the dragon. So it's definitely, uh, we will watch a video later. And many parents desire to uh, have their children born in the dragon year, the year of dragon. So, and some, some parents, they would even, you know, go through, you know, uh, like if, uh, if the baby is late coming and, you know, maybe in January, and they're almost mm -hmm. going to move into a new, another year. They would be even be willing to go through the secession uh, to take the baby out earlier, so that the baby <laughs> would be born is, in, is born in another year. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> um, and also, uh, like, uh, let, let's talk a little bit about the year of the ox. Um, so the yes. ox, because we're heading into the year of the ox. So oxes are known for diligence, dependability, uh, strength, and determination. And these reflect traditional conservative characteristics. So female, uh, we, fe women who were born in the year of ox are regard generally regarded as being traditional, faithful wives who attach great importance to their children's education. And the uh, male oxes are strongly patriotic, have ideals and ambitions for life and attach importance to family and work. Um, and uh, people would regard as the, um, um, the rat, the monkey, and rooster as the best matched zodiac signs for ox. And rabbit and snake are complementary with the ox. Uh, mm -hmm. So matched are uh, tiger, dragon, horse, and goat. Um, and if you are born in the year of the ox, uh, they have the lucky numbers, uh, luck, unlucky numbers, um, you know, even the unlucky directions. Uh, lucky colors, lucky flowers. So, so um, this is uh, what some people believe, but not everyone believes in these, uh, you know, um, this kind of uh, thing. Okay, um, let's see who, there are some very famous ox uh, people who were born in, in the year of the ox. Uh, so as we said, there are six, um, uh, six um, elements which are, you know, connected to the ox. So when you are born in a different ox year, 
uh, you could be a metal or a wood. So the first person, mm -hmm. Barack Obama, he was a metal ox. He was born in the metal ox. So actually this year, this year is the metal ox again, right? So I think mm -hmm. Obama should be 60 this year, I think, right? Um, he's 60, yeah, definitely we have his date here. Um, so, and also Van Gogh, the famous painter, artist, he was a water ox. Adolf Hitler, he was an earth ox. Uh, Walt Disney, he was a gold ox. Uh, he established the Walt Disney. Um, uh, Margaret Thatcher, uh, she was an, a wood ox. So uh, although they were all born in the year of ox, but we can see that they have very different uh, personalities. Okay, so Shannon, could you please play the video? Of so what is exactly Chinese zodiac? Most Westerners think of Greco-Roman zodiac, the sign divided into 12 months. Chinese zodiac is different. It's a 12-year cycle labeled with animals, starting with a rat and ending with a pig, and has no association with constellations. For example, if you were born in 1975, you are a rabbit. Can you see a zodiac sign there? Our Chinese ancestors constructed a very complicated theoretical framework based on yin and yang, the five elements, and the 12 zodiac animals. Over the thousands of years, this popular culture has affected people's major decisions, such as naming, marriage, giving birth, and attitude to each other. And some of the implications are quite amazing. Chinese believe certain animals get on well than the others. So parents, they choose specific years to give birth to the babies because they believe the team effort by the right combination of animals can give prosperity to the families. We even refer into the zodiac when enter into romantic relations. I'm a pig. I should have perfect romance with tigers, goats and rabbits. Chinese people believe some animals are natural enemies. As a pig, I need to be careful with a snake. Raise your hands if you're a snake. Let's have a chat later. <laughs> we believe some animals are luckier than the others, such as the dragon. Unlike the Western tradition, Chinese dragon is a symbol for power, strength and wealth. It's everyone's dream to have a dragon baby. Jack Ma's parents must have been very proud, and they are not the only one. In 2012, the year of the dragon, the birth rate in China, Hong Kong and Taiwan increased by 5%. That means another one million more babies. <laughs> With a traditional preference to baby boys, the boy-girl ratio of that year was 120 to 100. When those dragon boys grow up, they will face much more severe competition in love and job markets. According to the BBC and the Chinese government's press release, the January 2015 saw a peak of cesarean sections. Why? That was the last month for the year of the horse. It's not because they like horses so much, it's because they try to avoid having unlucky goat babies. <laughs> if you are a goat, Please don't feel bad. Those are goat babies. They don't look like losers to me. <laughs> Tiger is another undesirable animal due to its volatile temperament. Many Chinese regions saw a sharp decline of birth rate during those years. Perhaps one should consider zodiac in reverse, as those tiger and goat babies will face much less competition. Maybe they are the lucky ones. I went through the Forbes top 300 richest people in the world, and it's interesting to see the most undesirable two animals, the golden tiger, are at the top of the chart, even higher than the dragon. So maybe we should consider, maybe it's much better to have less competition. One last but interesting point. Many Chinese people make their investment decisions based on the zodiac sign index. Although the belief and the tradition of the zodiac sign has been over thousands of years, the trend of using it in making major decisions did not really happen until the past few decades. Our ancestors were very busy 
to survive from poverty, drought, famine, riot, disease, and civil war. And finally, Chinese people have the time, wealth, and technology to create an ideal life they've always wanted. The collective decision made by 1.3 billion people has caused the fluctuation in economics and demand on everything, from healthcare and education to property and consumer goods. As China plays such an important role in global economy and geopolitics, the decision made based on zodiac and other Chinese traditions end up impacting everyone around the world. So this is uh, it's a very good presentation. Um, okay, I will continue to share my screen with you. You know, um, mm -hmm. I will say, uh, Xu Ji, we, we mm -hmm. had this conversation Say. about uh, mm. me explaining the, Zod mm. the Chinese zodiac to my husband, who's more mm. uh, attuned to looking at constellations. And mm. if you look at the origin of the word zodiac, it mm. means, mm. in essence, a cycle or circle of little mm. animals. Mm. That's the derivative of the name. So even in Western culture, it's still a cycle or circle of animals, but we do it with the, the Western culture uses constellations. So that's mm. a very different use of the word, but uh, both zodiacs use animals. Yeah, yeah. So um, the uh, Western, um, uh, the Western zodiac, um, uh, theory um, kind of um, has some similarities with the Chinese ones. Like they all use 12, right, as the number. Mm -hmm. But people kind of guess that maybe the Chinese zodiac animal signs, they uh, have, some, uh, have some relation to the Western ones uh, at the very beginning in its sure. very early uh, origin. Uh, but then uh, the uh, Chinese, um, the uh, zodiac animal, they are, they are still different. Right, so we use this, these uh, 12 animals to mark year, but whereas the Western consideration theories you use, it's a month, right? Right. So for, your 12, uh, for the each month. Um, and also, um, and uh, we believe that a person's uh, fortune uh, or destiny is more decided by uh, not only the year, but also the month and the hour in, on which mm -hmm. you were born. So. Uh, if you want to, if you go to a fortune teller in the ancient times, he would just ask on which day, on which hour, which day, uh, and which month, or which year that person was born, and then right. they tell your fortune. Um, and also, like uh, for you, uh, for the, in the Western um, theory, like um, uh, for uh, your, the year, the month in which you were born is a normal, you know, it's just a usual month for you from uh, every year. But in the Chinese um, zodiac um, uh, theory, like um, if you the year in which you were born is kind of regarded as an unlucky year for you. So I will talk about this later. So um, there, um, I think both of them reflect uh, the people's observation of the nature, and we that in the Chinese philosophy we try to reach harmony with the nature. This is the level which everyone tries to aspire to to live in mm -hmm. harmony with the nature. And it, they are both reflection of the, um, of people's, you know, observance of the stars uh, in, in the universe. Uh, Virginia, were you raising your hand? Oh, no. I think that's from earlier. Okay, okay. All right. Yeah. Mm, so should I move on with my- um... Absolutely. Mm, okay, mm, so we, um, okay. So I will talk very briefly next, uh, I'll talk very briefly about um, who celebrates the Spring Festival. So um, the Spring Festival or the Chinese New Year is celebrated in many countries, uh, especially those with significant Chinese populations, uh, not only uh, in Asian, uh, in Asian uh, uh, Southeast Asian countries, but also in uh, North America, uh, in Europe, and also in, uh, uh, in Australia too. So very briefly, like, uh, I think the um, outside China, the Southeastern Asian countries, they have the biggest uh, celebrations uh, of the Chinese New Year. And they sometimes, in some countries, they even give a national public holiday for that, and which is even considered to be one of the most important holidays of the year. 
uh, like in Malaysia and Singapore, the Chinese New Year's Eve is also a half day holiday. Uh, right. And yeah, so all kinds of, um, I will not go into, go into the details, but then uh, like in Malaysia, it hosts one of the biggest uh, Chinese New Year celebrations. Um, the, in the Chinese temples, uh, people crowd uh, there to pray. And you can also see uh, lion dances and people lighting fireworks during this time. Um, uh, we'll skip the like Singapore. Now these are all very you know. Just the last year, they had a huge uh, celebration uh, for a, a, a big, um, um, a wide variety of cultural performances and the colorful floats, and also many parades with uh, with. Uh, uh, with uh, also together coupled with uh, lion dances, dragon dances, um, also in the Philippines, um, okay, uh, in Thailand, uh, in Thailand. So these are the countries that have uh, got very big, uh, Ch Indonesia, very big uh, Chinese populations, and also in Australia, uh, especially in Sydney, um, uh, they have the. Um, Sydney claims to have the largest Chinese New Year celebrations outside of Asia, um, with uh, about 600,000 people attending the celebrations in Chinatown annually. Uh, so like um, outside China, mostly these events uh, take place in the Chinatowns. So uh, like in Europe, the L London, uh, Paris, um, Netherlands, the Netherlands, and also in North America, um, do you know which country, uh, which cities um, have the biggest Chinatowns in, in the United States? San Francisco. States? Yeah, sure, San Francisco, right? So San Francisco, Los Angeles, New York City, Boston, Chicago, uh, um, and even Hawaii, they have, um, you know, they have a new Chinese New Year celebrations. Uh, for example, uh, like uh, in the, uh, I have some uh, information here, like in, like in Chicago, Chicago hosts two huge Chinese New Year celebrations, uh, one in the northern part, the other in the southern part. And in Boston, uh, Boston has the, uh, has the you know, United States uh, third largest Chinatown. So it's also, uh, it also has one of the largest remaining Chinatowns in, in, New in New England. So a lot of people flock there to celebrate the occasion. Um, and also, of course, in, in Los Angeles, uh, New York uh, City. Uh, New York City is also a very popular destination for people to celebrate the uh, Chinese New Year. Uh, even Hawaii has the most uh, very stunning and exotic celebrations too. They hold uh, Honolulu's Chinatown hosts two weeks of family-friendly activities, including fireworks and a pageant, a Narcissus Queen pageant, uh, which is a beautifully lit nighttime festival. So all kinds of uh, activities, but uh, uh, this year because of the pandemic, uh, I'm not sure they would hold, uh, I don't think they would host many uh, large scale probably activities. Not. Yeah, probably not, okay. No one would want to share a dragon costume with each other. Yeah. Unless they were from the same household. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it's not good for so many clouds to, meet uh, together together. Mm. Okay, so um, next uh, I will talk about the uh, festival activities uh, which people do during the uh, Chinese uh, festival. Uh, now the first thing uh, that people would do, we have two participants raising hand. So Let's see. Mm. Uh, would you like to unmute yourself and ask a question? Mm. It might just be one, let me see. Mm. Mm. This is Vivian. Mm -hmm. oh, go ahead. Hi, Vivian. Okay, my question is that mm. this is a spring festival, mm. and most of the Asian countries are in the northern hemisphere. What about mm. the southern hemisphere? Because it's not spring at the same time. So, how mm. do you deal with that? Interesting um, question. Very interesting and good question. Um, I think they still celebrate it. Like, uh, like it, it's the same thing as uh, as Christmas, right? Like for Australia, uh, uh, at Christmas time, they they are in summer, 
So they still have Santa Claus dressed up <laughs> in the very hot weather. So we, so we celebrate yeah, the festival at the same time. So although we may- mm. The dominant culture is that of the Asian countries, which are in the Western hemisphere, mm. the Northern, Northern hemisphere. So it would mm. probably dominate. Yeah, yeah. Mm -mm. Interesting. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So we uh, the time, the celebrating it at the same time is very important to this festival. Mm. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Mm -mm. okay. Uh, all right. So. Mm. Okay. So I will talk about some of the activities. Uh, there are a lot of fun activities surrounding yes. this festival mm. uh, and very interesting ones. Uh, the first one, the first thing that people would do in preparation for the uh, Chinese New Year is to uh, do house cleaning. Uh, people would clean their house um, before Chinese New Year, uh, usually in the last months, last lunar months before the uh, New Year, and then uh, they would carry out a thorough winter cleaning of their houses. So I remember ever since I was very young, uh, I always have to help my parents cleaning up the house from outside to inside. So it, uh, it's called sweeping away the dust, Sao Chen. So it represents a wish to put away the old things, bid farewell to the, uh, to the past and welcome the new year. Uh, and the second activity they, they do is to paste the character Fu. Okay, so this, uh, this is a character which people love. Do you know what this Fu means, this character? Um, mm -hmm. It means uh, fortune or good luck. Oh. So, yeah, it means fortune or good luck. So it's, uh, you know, everybody loves fortune or good luck, right? But then interestingly enough, uh, the Chinese people often display upside down Fu uh, uh, when they paste it. Because the words for upside down, Dao, uh, are homophonous uh, with the word arrive, uh, arrive, down. So there are only different characters, but they have the same pronunciation. So in other words, if you paste it upside down, it means that the uh, fortune of good luck arrives at your home. So most often you would see character uh, full like this, uh, not in the, you know, not in the, uh, so it symbolizes the arrival of luck, happiness, and prosperity. Mm. So interesting. Yeah. Uh, and people would also paste paper cut and uh, twin lian, or what we call the spring couplets. So they decorate windows and doors with red, or always, they're always red color. And um, the popular themes among these paper cuts and couplets include that of hopeful thoughts for the coming year, good fortune or happiness, wealth, and longevity. So if you have um, elderly people in your home, then you would probably you know, uh, have different themes for your couplets. So this is the red couplets, you know, it's pasted on the door, uh, on the door um, and you have the full character, um, both sides of the door. And the full would usually be pasted on the, in the middle part of the door. Uh, and then these are the paper cuts, uh, you know, they are all in red. Some, some wow. of them uh, are in colors. So mm, you see Fu, you see these characters, Fu. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Fu, okay. Means blessings, uh, kind of like the blessings in English. So this is a paper cut for the year 2021. What can you recognize here? Definitely the, the, is it, is there a lotus flower in there or? Uh, yeah. And, and the Chinese lantern. Uh-huh. And, and of course the ox. Yeah, the ox. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, and also the year 2021, right? Mm -hmm. Now these are all cut with hands. Um, the flowers, right, which represents luck. Um, they are symbols of luck and uh, prosperity. And here there are two char four characters. Niu Nian Da Ji means uh, good luck uh, in the year of the ox. Uh, these characters mean. Okay, so. Um, and also people would hang red lanterns um, during the spring festival. Uh, especially if you live in the countryside, it's much easier for you to do so. Uh, but like in the, if it's in, uh, in the, in, if you live in the city, 
uh, mostly uh, you would you wouldn't hang it in, in front of your apartment, but those like uh, department stores, uh, the restaurants, they would all be hanging the lanterns uh, here uh, during, and then uh, they would hang this for altogether 15 days until the lantern festival, uh, which right. was the last day of the new year. Mm. And the lanterns. So, so, so mm. the lanterns would be lit or lit or hung throughout yeah. the whole celebration. And then there's the lantern festival at the end. That's yeah. Yeah. So the lantern festival oh. marks the end of the Chinese New Year. So it's actually very long, although the oh. national official holiday is only seven days. But actually, uh, the uh, Chinese New Year lasts 15 days uh, until the New Year's first full moon, beginning from the New Year's first new moon to the first full moon. Mm. Uh, okay, so, uh, so uh, um, and also uh, the, um, the people, the reason why people are, uh, you know, uh, pasting the, uh, the, uh, uh, the red couplets, it has to do with the legend. Uh, so it uh, beginning of the Chinese uh, New Year started with a mythical, you know, beast called Nian. That's why the Chinese New Year is also called Guo Nian. So uh, Nian is actually um, a beast which lives under the sea or in the mountains uh, during, uh, and the, uh, the Nian, this animal beast would come out to eat uh, people, human beings especially children in the middle of the night, so during the spring festival. So um, the people, the villagers were terrible, uh, were, you know, were terribly scared of him and try to hide every year during this time. And then one year, an older man appeared before the villagers uh, and said that he, he would stay, you know, for the night in the village and would get revenge on this beast, Nian. So, um, uh, and all the be all the other villagers, they were so scared. They hid away from the mountain in the mountains. But then only this older man stayed. And then the uh, older man put red papers up and a set of firecrackers. And then the uh, when the beast came into the village, uh, he was scared away by the red color and the firecrackers. So that it makes was, sense. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> So later, the villagers assumed that the old man was kind of like was a deity who came, you know, kind of like a god, you know, godly man who came to save them. So he, they discovered that the beast was afraid of the color red and the loud noises. So that's why the red color is the predominant color in the spring festival, because they believe that if you wear red, wear red clothes, hand red lanterns, and the red spring, uh, you know, you uh, on the on your windows and doors, the beast would never would be so frightened and would never come back. So, and after they started doing this, the beast never came to the village again. So this is the the uh, legend uh, behind this. So that explains why we uh, we hand the red banners, uh, we set off the firecrackers. Mm. And also, of course, the spring festival is uh, time for family reunion. And on New Year's Eve, which is the, uh, the most, one of the most important days in the Chinese New Year, people would gather together for the family reunion dinner. This home is the principal focus of this festival. So the whole night, so this is, the, this is actually the most important uh, event uh, for the Chinese New Year. So people gather together on Christmas, uh, on New Year Eve, and uh, the, uh, the time is spent in together, enjoying this feast along with cheerful family talk and laughter. So I, I would compare this meal to maybe the Thanksgiving dinner in the United States or maybe Christmas yeah. dinner. Yeah. Um, so it's, uh, it's of course the most important. Uh, and this uh, meal, this dinner is usually Guess who uh, in who's uh, in elderly people's home or younger people's home? Like interesting, you, um, mm -hmm. you know, I've been as all of us are watching the uh, development of of COVID around the globe, mm -hmm. and I know that there's been a lot of um, strict restrictions in China, and. Mm -hmm very smart because they know that the spring festival is coming mm. and the time where people will want to be with family 
Mm-hmm. And hopefully by mid-February, you know, mm-hmm. it's, you know, if people are going to get together, there won't be another COVID spike. But what are we doing instead of getting together? I think that's oh. your next slide. You mean, you mean uh, in, in China, right? Um, Correct. Yeah, in China um, this year, um, Last uh, spring festival, uh, the spring festival in 2020, right? Basically, people were just locked at home. They couldn't go right. out. They couldn't leave their city uh, for maybe more than a month. Uh, and then for this year, um, as far as I know, I think uh, China, with a lot of restrictionary uh, measures uh, and very, very strict testing, you know, and whenever they discover several cases in the city, the whole city gets tested. Uh, and, right. Uh, and for those with more cases, uh, the villages or the city would come into a kind of a kind of similar similar to lockdown again. But like uh, I think that uh, the pandemic is uh, pretty much under control in China. You yeah. Know, uh, yeah. So yeah. I think this year they are still allowed to um, gather together for the family reunion dinners. Yeah. But except for like you know the situation is evolving all the time. Right in the past few weeks, uh, there were a few cities which knew quite uh, some new cases were discovered. So only those uh, few cities they were kind of in the lockdown. But the majority mm-hmm. uh, parts of China, people still they can move around. Uh, they uh, they can uh, gather together and they can go back to their hometown, except for right. a few cities that are currently in lockdown. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, I'm sorry I interrupted. You were you were getting to uh, the uh, virtual celebration, I think. Mm, uh, so uh, like um, yeah, so we are coming to this um, uh, the virtual. Uh, this is uh, watching CCTV or uh, Chinese New Year gala uh, is a very important event uh, to uh, during the New Year's Eve. Uh, so I think this uh, event uh, began in 1983. So, and ever since then, every uh, Chinese New Year Eve, we watch this, uh, there is this event uh, and it lasts 4.5 hours. It's a live broadcast and it features music, dance, comedy, opera, Kung Fu and acrobatic performances. Uh, so, um, and of course the dominant color is uh, red again. Uh, so of course now, because every year you see, you do the same thing. So the audience are becoming more and more critical of the programs. And especially like with the internet, we have so many accesses to different kinds of programs. So uh, people, less and less people are watching this program, but uh, you know, this, this, but still, you know, the majority of the population would turn on the TV uh, beginning from eight o'clock and last late until 12.30 to watch this uh, new year. Gala. Um, so this is, uh, you know, typically if I were in China, this is what my family would be doing uh, after the dinner. Uh, so we uh, we have some snacks, we have the peanuts, we have the fruits, uh, we have you know uh, different uh, fruits uh, laid on the table uh, on on the you know on the um, tea table, and then we watch the uh, uh, gala together. So it's uh, you will see that all kinds of you know they spent months preparing for this one every year, um, and uh, all kinds of uh, all kinds of movie stars, singers, famous singers, they get a chance to appear very briefly in this program. Okay, so I will show you, uh, show this to you now, just to just for a very short time.
Okay, so <laughs> it looks very much like a Disney production. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's interesting to hear you say, you know, to talk about from uh, the westerns, a uh, westerners perspective. Yeah, like a Disney production, right? But the yes. Disney production. Um, okay, we have a question here. For Lantern Festival, are, are the lanterns hung and the ones you mentioned taken down or added to? What do you mean by the ones I mentioned? I'm not sure. Um, Ruth, it's from Ruth. Ruth. If you want to mm -hmm. ask, um, mm -hmm. I know that they are all hung. And sorry, then, just, to, to, yeah. sorry, just when you said that there were some um, at the mm -hmm. festival at the beginning, and I just uh -huh. wondered then, like, how come it's called Lantern Festival at the end? So I thought, oh. are other ones hung up and then they're taken down or? Mm. Yeah, the Lantern Festival is uh, spe uh, specifically the day, which is the 15th day of the first month of the lunar calendar, right? So, and on this day, people would, um, uh, they would hold special activities for people to watch the lanterns. Um, and uh, in different on different occasions, and then after they are uh, after this, yeah, uh, these lanterns they are taken down, and people store it, and then wait uh, until the next year to hand them up again. Now, when you're talking about the festival, are you talking about those kind of lanterns that that float up with the can with the candlelight or? Um, no, I just meant the red ones that we saw at the beginning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just wondered where they like were they left up the whole time, or were other ones put up then for Lantern Festival, or no, just the same, <laughs> the same yeah, lanterns, I, think, I guess. Yeah, I think they're the same. But then for the Lantern Festival, um, they would have uh, special activities, like in the gotcha. garden. In the gardens, people would, uh, you know, many people would gather together and light the lanterns, maybe to let them fly into the sky. So these are uh, special activities that people would hold on this day too. But then people hand the lanterns the whole, you know, during the whole 15 holiday, maybe or a little bit before that too. Mm. So but, yeah. uh, let's get back to your, um, your other symbolic um, parts of the festival. I want to get to the dragon uh, dance. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Ruth. <laughs> okay. How? And also people would set off firecrackers uh, at exactly uh, 12 o'clock or in the in the middle of the night. Uh, so usually on this that uh, during this time you can on the New Year Eve you cannot really sleep well because there are loud bands of firecrackers from zero o'clock maybe to two or three o'clock, but mostly concentrating during this half hour because they are setting up the firecrackers to welcome the new year, you know, to, uh, to uh, welcome good luck into their home by doing so. And also mm -hmm. to scare away bad luck, the legendary monster Nian. Uh, and also uh, many, uh, but uh, in recent years, many urban areas like in Shanghai or big cities, uh, they have a firecracker ban. So we, uh, we ask, you know, we don't do that very often um, in order to prevent accidents and mostly uh, to uh, to improve the air quality because when you say oh, yes it, yeah it's very bad for the um, at, uh, for the air quality uh, yeah. but in the countryside people still do that mm. you were asking me about western culture as far as mm. new york new year's celebrations mm. and there are a few superstitions and and customs that we use mm. and for mm. the same reason that's why we do firecrackers i think mm. probably we got it from the mm. chinese culture because they are the ones that that, that invented fireworks and mm. um, but you know the loud sounds are supposed to scare off the evil spirits again in western culture and okay. interestingly enough you were asking me about any other ones some of the strange ones are uh, eating 12 grapes um, before the the strike of midnight. Uh, mm. Supposedly, this is in uh, Spain. Uh, if you can eat 12 grapes, uh, it, it will be a sign of good luck. Mm. Uh, and of course, in the South, we eat greens to bring us money and mm. uh, peas for prosper prosperity. 
Um, but anyway, back to your, put back mm -hmm. to other um, mm -hmm. symbols. Okay, good. Thank you for your sharing. That's very interesting to know. Uh, by eating 12 grapes, does it, the 12 grapes, does it represent the 12 months in the new year? I, I would imagine so. <laughs> A lot of things come in 12s, uh, don't they? <laughs> um, I would say, um, uh, like um, like the Americans, uh, because of due, under the influence of Christianity more, they are not um, uh, as uh, kind of what we call the superstitious as um, right. many Chinese are, right? Um, okay, so, um, uh, and also uh, in the spring festival, we uh, give red envelopes um, and mm -hmm. a lot of money will be given usually by seniors um, to the to kids uh, or, or given by uh, established married couples to the younger unmarried children of the family. Uh, so uh, most of the money uh, can be used to buy the kids toys, snacks, uh, clothes, uh, stationery, or saved for their future edu educational expenditure. Uh, and mostly, uh, uh, sometimes people try to put money, which is brand new, into the red pockets. So like that my, would make my, sense. Yeah, my, my dad always go to the bank and ask them to give him some new money uh, before the Chinese New Year. And usually the money is in even number of amount. So it's, um, you know, it's in lucky, uh, lucky amount. Uh, to the Chinese people, we like the even number better, like a six, eight, you know? Now we like the even number, not four. Four is uh, regarded as an unlucky number. So like hmm. probably it could be 600, 800, 200 uh, in, the, in the red packet. Um, and when uh, the kids uh, get the money um, from the elders, uh, it's polite for them if they uh, wish them a happy new year uh, and a year of uh, good health or good fortune before accepting the red envelope. So yeah, and, and also, um, for during this half a month's time, people would uh, visit relatives uh, from one family to another. So mostly mm -hmm. people wouldn't, would stay at home on the first day of the Chinese New Year. And starting from the second day, people visit relatives, you know, <laughs> um, and then they bring, they need to bring gifts um, to an, one another's homes. And also when you meet the kids, you should give them red envelopes. Uh, these are ritual, if you don't do that, it's regarded as being not polite. And so uh, basically during the whole half, uh, you know, 15 days, you eat a lot. Like when a you- A lot. One, yeah, one family, they cook very delicious, a lot of food for you. And then the next day you bring some gifts and visit another relative and they would cook very delicious food to you too. So people would like to say that um, during the festivals, you always gain at least the three pounds of, you know, meat <laughs> into your body. Um, so, because the Chinese people always associate um, food with uh, fest uh, festival celebrations. Uh, and also, of course, the dragon dance and lion dance. Uh, um, the, it's believed that the loud beats of the drum and the, the deafening sounds of this, you know, the symbols together uh, would, um, you know, ev evict bad or evil spirits. So we can see a lot of like the uh, videos uh, that actually it's not easy. Uh, it requires a lot of skills to do the lion dance. Um, and also, as I mentioned before, um, uh, if you, uh, you happen to be in your zodiac year, uh, it, it's uh, regarded as not uh, a lucky year for you. So you should be very careful uh, during this year. Um, I wonder, do you have a reason for that? Uh, it's believed that um, if uh, in your zodiac year, um, it's um, you are in conflict with the the uh, god of um, the god of age, something like oh. that. Yeah. So, uh, and he would bring bad luck to you. Uh, Understood. So, yeah. So you uh, and to in order to avoid any accidents during this year, uh, you should wear red uh, to you know to bring good luck uh, in your zodiac year. So, um, so you should uh, try to wear red uh, during the whole year, <laughs> maybe every day, every day. 
Uh, so you would, if you tr tr uh, travel in China, you would find that a very interesting phenomenon is that uh, from uh, December to February, um, the department stores uh, is full of uh, strange winter fashion surrounding red underwear. No, um, not most prominent, prominent in the men's section, red underwear is one of the most popular gifts for sweethearts to exchange around Chinese New Year. So that, that is because of this uh, superstitious belief. Uh, so uh, because every year you always have people who, you know, who are born in this year, right? Who have this zodiac sign. So um, every year they sell a lot of, a lot of um, uh, underwear because if you don't want to wear underwear in your outwear, uh, you don't, if you don't want to wear red in your outwear, the safest way is to wear it in your underwear. <laughs> gotcha. Sometimes, yeah, so you wear it every day. So um, and many would, people would buy a lot of this and you can, it, you know, you can wear, you need to wear it every day. So this way, even if you don't have any red color in your outside clothes, you, you are still, still wearing red. So that's why like uh, even some very famous brands, they produce the red underwear in, in China, Calvin Klein. Um, mm -hmm. And you can also wear jade to wear jade um, to um, to uh, uh, bring you good luck to uh, drive away the bad luck in this year. So this is very different from the uh, um, uh, so people like when they are entering the zodiac year, they kind of uh, they would uh, you know be they remind themselves that they should be very cautious during this year so that no bad accidents would happen to them. And mm -hmm. I, I have I have a few friends. Uh, they had those, you know, very unfortunate events happening to them it, just in that zodiac year. So this makes them to believe in this kind of theory even more. Mm. Okay, so it, it's, a, it's very interesting, isn't it? Um, okay, now last I will talk about the traditional food that people eat uh, during this, uh, during the spring uh, festival. Um, to Chinese people, food is very, very important. Uh, some people say that um, there are probably no other people quite like the Chinese who are so passionate and fastidious about cooking. Uh, we spend a lot of time in studying how to cook and we spend a lot of time in cooking the food. Um, so that's probably why uh, the Chinese food is, uh, someone said that it's the only truly international food all over the world. So wherever you go, like even like in the United States, you may be in a very small city or small town. You can always find a Chinese restaurant, although it could be, you know, in a very remote area. You can still find a Chinese restaurant. Um, I, I grew up in a very small town in North uh, Alabama, and uh -huh. the, on, the only foreign food was uh, a, a small Chinese restaurant, family uh, owned. Yes. 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 That was back in the uh, 60s and 70s. So. Wow. Mm, yeah, so um, uh, and in the Chinese New Year, people insist on creating festival fruits uh, bearing auspicious meanings. And uh, by eating them, they believe that they can bring good luck. So let's see how, why do they eat, why they eat these specific kinds of food. The first is the Chinese dumplings, or jiaozi, jiaozi. Um, I think you can even, you can buy this at Costco. Costco sells pretty delicious dumpling and not uh, at an inexpensive price. Uh, so it's a traditional dish eat, eaten on Chinese New Year's Eve, especially in North China. Um, that they eat this because the jiaozi, the dumplings look like Chinese silver ingots um, in the ancient times. So now when we see- Oh, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so legend has it that the more dumplings you eat during the New Year celebrations, the more money you can make it make in the new year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so of course, um, the dumplings uh, can, has got a minced meat and the finely chopped vegetables in it, and it could be um, um, you know different all kinds of different food could be put into it. Uh, so this is the jiaozi, uh, the dumplings. Uh, you can also buy them from the Chinese restaurants in Birmingham. Well, um, I've always been confused as uh, the difference between dumplings 
uh, something called pot stickers and then dim sum. They're all dumplings yeah. in a way. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. That's because Chinese food is so meticulous. Mm -hmm. Now, everything, they all have different names. Uh, they all have different names in Chinese, but in English, you you cannot find equivalents. So people just give a general name to it, dumpling. Mm -hmm. But actually, they are very different. Uh, different. So we have people raising hand. Uh, yes, go up, Vivian. Mm -hmm. Did you have a question? Anyone want to ask is a, a question? Is a wonton the same thing as a dumpling? That's another. I hadn't yeah. thought about dumplings. <laughs> wonton is not a dumpling. Okay, wonton is uh, wrapped in a different kind of a uh, wrapper. Dump, you know, so. Wonton, now this dumpling we would call jiao zi. And wonton in Chinese, we would say hun dun. So that they're actually different things. But sometimes the, uh, their uh, feelings could uh, resemble each other. Uh, now, yes. hun dun is mainly eaten by people in the southern part of China, especially like in cities like Shanghai. But then jiao zi is more popular uh, in the northern part of China. And the pot stickers is mainly for frying. You know, it's good for frying. They right. it, it's usually not for boiling. Then, uh, but the dumpling jiaozi can be either boiled, steamed, or fried. Uh, oh, so, interesting. Yeah, but the uh, wonton doesn't have the shape of uh, in you know the gold uh, in the ancient times. So this is the fried, uh, the fried uh, jiaozi. Mm. So uh, like when we try to translate the Chinese you know, dish names into English, you find it's so hard because the, uh, the Chinese people, the Chinese food, they have so many kinds of cooking uh, methods mm -hmm. and they have so many kinds of, you know, um, you know, different types of dishes. So it's very difficult to translate most of the time. It's kind of like trying to translate all of uh, Alaskans were, were Inuit's words for snow. <laughs> yeah, yes, there's so yes. many ver too many versions to translate correctly. Yes, yeah. Mm. So this has the, the the language is a reflection of the culture. Uh, like mm -hmm. the uh, like for the Western people, you wouldn't mind too much like uh, what you eat for your lunch, right? But the uh, you know they and people say that uh, to the Western people, when you eat food, it's like you just add gas to your car. You need it. You need energy, so you eat food. But the Chinese people make cooking or eating as kind of a ceremonial thing. <laughs> uh, okay, Virginia, did you raise your yes. hand? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, um, I'm noticing this picture where you're putting a coin in the dumpling. Yes. This mm -hmm. kind of reminds me of Mardi Gras and the Mardi Gras cake uh, that yes. you've been, you know, starting to see in the stores now where they put a baby uh, mm -hmm. in there. Uh, do mm -hmm. you think that there might be some kind of a connection then between the ideas of, of what's behind Mardi Gras and what's behind um, uh, celebrating the new year, uh, the Lunar New Year in uh, Asia? That's an interesting question. Um, it does coincide uh, as far as the uh, lunar calendar goes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but isn't Mardi Gras more of a derivative from a religious ceremonies and the mm. the um, the Catholic faith? I'm not sure. Mm. But oh. anyway, yeah, yeah. Well, well, um, uh, yeah, Mar Mardi Gras, uh, yeah, deals with those ideas where uh, you have had a period of time where you have. Um, well, I guess uh, afterwards you're you're supposed to, uh, uh, well, it's a celebration before abstinence, right. and and so I would think I think this kind of goes back to once again the medieval period and uh, uh, and the rise of the Catholic Church when it was was literally the universal uh, right. church. Right. So. Um, but the fact that that there's a baby that's supposed to, I think, also like if you get the piece of the Mardi Gras cake, uh, and if you, if you find the baby that's in that cake, I think that's supposed to bring you good luck. <laughs> just as this, and it's, is and, it's to, and it's a symbol of baby Jesus. Um, 
<laughs> yes, maybe um, right. I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not claiming to be an expert on it, but me neither. <laughs> clarity, you know, where something is hidden and uh, and that you find it and it's supposed to somehow be a good omen, uh, you know, for yes. the future. And so mm -hmm. there's a very similar idea uh, mm -hmm. coming from two different cultures. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So if you eat the, um, the dumpling with the coin in it, you are supposed to be uh, the most lucky person in, in your home. Okay. Uh, and also when people eat these things, they would say beautiful things to each other. Uh, people, the Chinese folk be believe in the power of words. Uh, like I think the Westerners believe in, like the Bible says that God says, let there be light and there was light, right? So the right. Chinese Similarly, Chinese people hope, uh, think that, like, especially in the Chinese New Year time, we should pay attention to what we say, uh, because it's like if you, we would, uh, uh, we need to express the good wishes to, uh, to your friends and relatives, believing that they could bring you good luck uh, in the, you know, they could really bring you good luck. So these are, we believe in the power of the words too. Uh, and also people would eat fish. Um, in the, uh, in the uh, festival because the fish yu, uh, sounds like yu, uh, sounds like surplus. So when you eat fish, we are uh, expressing our hope that we would have surplus money at the end of the year. So um, we can make more in the next year. And we it, the fish could be uh, cooked either like in the steamed fish or can also be fried. Um, and notice that the Chinese people, we eat the whole fish. You see, uh, I think the Westerners, they mainly just eat the fish meat, but we eat mm -hmm. the whole fish with the head and the tail on. And at a family dinner, the fish's head should, uh, you know, should be uh, directed towards the most elderly person in the family because it's regarded as the, the most, uh, pres uh, you know, the best part. Um, um, Okay, so can be can also be braised, can also be steamed, uh, and also we um, uh, we we'll just skip this uh, quickly. And so when we eat fish, we say nian nian you may, may you always have more than you need. Uh, nian nian you mm. uh, And also, if you have a person who is uh, going to pass an exam in the new year, you you can say yu yue long men. So in the Chinese legend, uh, a fish leaping over the dragon gate implies successfully passing a competitive examination. Uh, okay, so, and also people would eat spring rolls um, at uh, Chinese New Year. Uh, so I think this is, uh, you can see uh, this uh, spring rolls are very popular in the Chinese restaurants here. Right? Yes, yes. Mm. So the reason we eat it because um, it's shaped like the um, like gold bars, you know. Gotcha. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a wish for prosperity, uh, too. Um, and also we eat glutinous rice cake. Uh, it also has to do with the words nian gao glutinous rice cake uh, resembles in sound uh, getting higher year by year. So Chinese, if you grow higher, either your income for kids. If they grow higher every year by year, that's very good, right? So it's mainly made of uh, sticky rice. So these food are eaten not, you know, it's mainly because of the sound, of their, um, you know, the um, the shape too. Nian nian mm -hmm. gao, right? So this is the use as can imply children's height, rise in business success, better grades in the study, promotions at work, always higher and higher. Okay, so this is how they make the. Nian, nian gao. Mm. Okay. And also people would eat tang yuan. Tang yuan, you can buy this uh, in the Chinese uh, Asian supermarkets too. Sweet rice bowl. Uh, because it's uh, round, you see, and it's very sweet, mostly very sweet. So it, uh, it's, it's a symbol of reunion and being together. Tang yuan. And also in the sound, tang yuan, resembles tuan yuan, which means reunion. Mm. So these are very auspicious food that people eat. Uh, they can be of different colors too, uh, happy together, tuan tuan yuan yuan. So when we eat tang yuan, we say tuan tuan yuan yuan means 
uh, you know, getting together, happy family reunion. Mm -hmm. And we also eat, we also believe that some fruit uh, can bring us a good fortune um, at the beginning of the beginning of the new year. So for example, tangerines and oranges and the pomelos, these three fruits are most, and maybe apples too. So can you make a guess why people like to eat tangerines or oranges and the pomelos? Uh, the sweetness and also the color. The color, okay. Why? Yeah. What, what the color? Mm. Oranges the and, and reds, yes, and gold. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Virginia, uh, Virginia, do you have anything to say? Mm. Yes, what is a pomelo? Pomelo. This is yeah. a pomelo, yeah. It's, it's bigger than an orange or a tangerine, right? Yeah, it's bigger. The skin is thicker and it's not very sweet. It's uh, sometimes it, it, it's a little bit sour. Some of them, most of them are sweet. Mm. Palm, uh, the oranges, tangerines are different from orange, uh, oranges, mm -hmm. right? So they are selected first because of they are round, they are round and golden in, you know, round. Round means, you know, reunion. Uh, golden in color, symbolizing fullness and wealth. And also for the lucky sound of uh, fruit names in Chinese, because uh, the Chinese orange ju or chen, uh, orange chen sounds the same as the Chinese for success. And the tangerine is pronounced as ju, uh, contains the part of the Chinese character for luck. So ji, you see, ji means luck. And this ji, you know, the right side of this character is the same as this luck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and of course you mentioned the sweetness, right? And also for pomelos, um, pomelos in Chinese, it's you. It sounds the same, almost the same as you, uh, to have, to have. So except for the tone. So, and also it sounds exactly like again. So if you make money and the next year you make money again, you know, you have good luck, you have good luck again in the new year. So that's why people uh, would eat. If, even if they don't eat it, they would lay them out on the table uh, so that, um, you know, they are symbols of the best wishes for the new year. Can they also put them out in honor of those that have passed too. To, oh, you haven't mentioned the kitchen god. That part really mm -hmm. was fascinating to me. Um, you invite the kitchen god in on you. you tell, can you uh, tell us a little bit about the kitchen god? Um, the kitchen god is more popular in the countryside, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, um, yeah, they um they would uh some they would also paste uh like on their doors, in addition to Fu the character, they would also paste portraits of the kitchen god, uh, which is in red paper on red paper on the door, so that if if you uh, have invite kitchen god into your home, and they would also set up firecrackers, uh on on a certain day during the 15 day celebration on a certain nights. The different cities have different dates for that. The, uh, on certain, on this night, you set firecrackers uh, to invite him into your home. Because like the Chinese people think that cooking, you know, food is so important to them. As long as you have food, everything is okay, right? So that's why kitchen guard is so important to you. So interesting. In, in, yeah, so this way the, he provides the food you need the whole year around. Uh, but this, uh, like in the cities, people don't do that as much as uh, the other activities. Mm. Okay. Now, I mm. asked the all important question mm. uh, of what Chinese restaurants do you personally know that do some of these special dishes? Uh, mm. Would you say the majority of Chinese restaurants during this time will have mm. special dishes or are there some that are better than others? Um, um, to the best of my knowledge, um, they, they wouldn't cook any very special Chinese New Year dishes for Westerners. Like, right. But you still can get um, jiaozi, dumplings, the right. spring roll, the fish, 
the whole year the round. They can. serve these dishes the whole year round. Um, uh, but uh, I don't think that the at least the restaurants in Birmingham, Birmingham is not you know it's not like we don't have a lot of Chinatown. We don't have any Chinatown, and the Chinese population is still relatively small. Right. So, there, um, there is there is a really really good uh, Chinese mm -hmm. grocery mm -hmm. over yeah. on Green Springs, and yeah. their adjoining restaurant is really fabulous. And I, mm -hmm. I think that would be considered Homewood, but. Um, yeah, it's in ingredients mm. for any of all that any dish I can imagine is in that grocery store. Yeah, it's quite amazing. Yeah, so like the Chinese people, they eat all kinds of food during the spring fest. You imagine fifteen days, you have to make different kinds: meat, right. vegetables. You know, so like any any kind of good food can be regarded as part of the Chinese oh. New Year. You know, food. Um, in Hoover, there is a Mr. Chen's restaurant. Yes, Mr. Yeah, Chen's. Which, yeah, which is pretty and, good. Too. Mm -hmm. And they're very uh, COVID responsible, responsible, mm -hmm. and they do mm -hmm. deliver. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah, um, the spring rolls. You know, they always provide that. Uh, the dumplings yes. and the noodles. No, sometimes uh, we eat noodles in the Chinese New Year too. Um, but um, I don't think they provide any very special dishes for that. Gotcha. Yeah. What a pleasant way to bring our presentation to a close. Mm -hmm. I know that um, I will also say uh, so, so very, so, I have so many great um, feelings for uh, this program. I've learned a lot and I've made a new friend. Um, and also I will plug, because it's my job, uh, the library's resources. If you want to attempt to learn Chinese, we have so many resources for you virtually or in your hand. Thank you so much, Xi Jin, for uh, helping us uh, prepare for Chinese New Year. Hello there, <laughs> Jaden and Kaylee. <laughs> Um, so if you want to pick up an, a Chinese lantern kit at the fiction desk, we've got plenty. Mm -hmm. um, we probably will we'll have them at the desk until about February 12th or 11th or 12th, um, as long as they last. Um, did you want to end, end on a, in any other note? Um, yeah, it's my great pleasure to spend the night with you. It's been a beautiful night. Um, yeah, uh, so just like the song that we have listened to, right? Um, the flower is a symbol of perseverance. So we're still in the middle of this um, pandemic, but we have got hopes in front of us, right? And the Spring Festival is also a symbol of saying goodbye to the past. Uh, new uh, and uh, welcoming the new year. So I believe that we can we can prevail, we can persevere, and we we'll yes. welcome the Chinese New Year with a lot of hopes and uh, 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 a, a lot a lot of uh, good wishes to you uh, in the new year. Um, Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Mm. And stay tuned to our virtual calendar online. Mm. Good night. 这头绽放